I go fishing a lot, and Scotch eggs are the perfect all-in-one mini picnic breakfast. First thing, get your eggs cooked. Bring the water up the bowl, onto the spoon, and lower them into the water. That way they don't hit the water and crack four and a half minutes. That will keep the centre nice and slightly runny. Now, ground sausage meat. I'm going to make mine a little bit spicier. I'm going to crumble in black pudding. That helps to season the scotch eggs inside. A little touch of salt and pepper. And then just to make it a little bit sweeter and a lot easier for the kids to eat, some grated apple. Combine that, blend in the apple and the black pudding. Eggs, once they're cooked, drain them and then run them under cold water. Cracking and cooling the eggs quickly will prevent the yolks turning grey. Tap them on the side of the pan, put them back into the water, and what happens, the water seeps underneath the shell. You see the shell come off so much easier. Eggs still slightly soft in the centre. I want that little bit of richness with the yolk. Next, you need to get yourself organised with a mini assembly line. Seasoned flour. A little egg wash. And breadcrumbs. Take your mince. Golf ball size. Spread the pate, manipulate with your thumb, and then sit your egg in there and spread the sausage over the egg. And you just seal that over. It's really important to keep that nice, even coating of sausage meat around the egg. You don't want it too thick, otherwise it gets too dense and it's unappetizing. Give them a light dusting in the seasoned flour. If you don't put the flour on, the egg wash won't stick. And if you don't put the egg wash on, the breadcrumbs won't stick. Into the egg, roll it round, shake off any excess egg wash, and roll it into your breadcrumbs. You can use this same three-stage method to breadcrumb anything you'd like, from chicken goujons and fish fillets to Wiener schnitzel. These are panko breadcrumbs, Japanese white breadcrumb, so no crust. You can experiment by adding flavours to your breadcrumbs like parmesan, herbs or citrus zest. I always like to push the actual breadcrumbs into the sausage meat so it gets that really nice golden brown and stops any of the outside burning. Once breadcrumbed, Lower the eggs carefully into a four centimetre deep bath of hot vegetable oil for 10 to 12 minutes. The eggs are actually cooked, soft and running the centre, so the objective is just to cook the sausage meat and the black pudding. They look great, don't they? Got hand grenades. There's something so magical about a scotch egg on a picnic because it's like this little mini breakfast. Beautiful. Drain them onto the paper, roll them round just to get off any excess oil, and then to transport them, some greasy beef paper. And that, for me, is the perfect start to the fishing trip. There's no wonder I never catch any fish, because I'm always too busy eating my scotch eggs. My ultimate black pudding lace scotch eggs, an irresistibly delicious picnic breakfast. My ultimate picnic keeps it simple with dishes that all work brilliantly well together. And that's one of the secrets. You have to treat a picnic like a celebration meal. Make sure you've got a stunning selection and a great balance of tastes and textures. But above all, make sure it's fun. I've saved my three most indulgent dishes for a tea time picnic treat. A stunning prawn and cucumber salad with a spicy yogurt dressing. A simply delicious anchovy dip and a sticky chocolate fridge cake that won't fail to revive a flagging family. And Tilly's keen to get in on the action. What are your favourites? A marshmallow and peanut fridge cake. Mm. Perfect for Perfect. a picnic. First things first, we have to slowly melt the chocolate. Mm, that's good. That's good? Mm. We're going to break up the chocolate. Right in there. Next, butter goes in. A couple of tablespoons of golden syrup. Mm, it's so good. If we melt chocolate too quickly, it starts to separate and destroy. The best and safest way to melt chocolate is always use a bain marie. But I'm going to keep a really close eye on mine and heat it over a super low heat. This stunning little cake has your favourites in there. Our digestives. Now, put your hands in there and give them like that. One. At a time ago, and crush. What's the one thing that you love about a picnic? I love eating outside. It's 
especially on a nice summery day. Oh, nice Not summer. so much in the winter, though. No. That's going to be the crunchy part of our fridge cake. And it's called a fridge cake because it can sit in the fridge or you can freeze it. Mm. Now, peanuts in, please. Can you use it without peanuts if you're allergic to peanuts? Oh, you can do, yeah, definitely. Now, what are these little babies? Cranberries. Cranberries. And from there... Marshmallow, my favourite. Favorite. OK. They're so bright. Aren't they? Why do you love marshmallows so much? Because they're so squidgy. Right, give that a nice mix-up. Chocolate's melting nicely, OK? I want you to pour that in and I'll mix it nice and gently. Slowly, 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 slowly. Nice. Now, touch more, please. Mmm. Mm. Good. Isn't it good? Give that a little mix with Daddy, please. Look, they're all melty and nice and gooey and gooey. Okay. Now, we're going to line the tray. So this is quite easy to make because um, you don't have to bake it. Mm-hmm. You just set it. Yeah. I want you to start pushing it into the corners, please, with your fingers, just laying it out nice and flat. Oh, it's all nice and marshmallow and oozy. Isn't mm. it? You need to get the spatula. OK, and look. How delicious does that look? Really delicious. I could eat it right now, but I couldn't because it's not set. No. So when that sets, OK, it'll go nice and firm, and then we can cut it into little bars, little squares. Triangles. Pull that over. And push. Push. Good. But the important part of pushing it down is so that we can slice it. And the more we push, the thinner we can slice. OK? <laughs> Good girl. Fridge cake done. Now, I'm going to make the most amazing anchovy dip with vegetables and bread. First, cut slices of baguette and bake in the oven at 180 degrees C for six minutes or until crisp. Meanwhile, roughly chop garlic and shallots and add to a food processor along with a tin of good quality anchovies. Sprinkle in some pitted black olives, flat leaf parsley and drizzle in the reserved anchovy oil and a little olive oil. Blitz to a paste and add pepper. Then, decant into a jar, ready to transport. Serve with a handful of fresh baby carrots, peppery radishes and your crisp baguette toast. Anchovy dip, a portable and deliciously palatable alfresco treat. Now, a spicy chilli yoghurt dressing with a prawn salad. First things first, I'd like you to make the dressing. Fish sauce. Smell of fishes. So one and a half tablespoons of fish sauce. Two chili. I like this, especially if you have it on the side of the prawn. Little teaspoon of sugar. That's it. Oh, that's it good. In. So four tablespoons of yogurt. Three. Mm -hmm. Four. Some zest in there. Why are you making it in a jam jam, not a bowl? Mm -hmm. Well, this is for a little picnic. And it's a great way of transporting. We squeeze the lime in there, and then we put I'm the lid on. Shake it. And then I want you to it's shake it. Put it on tight. <laughs> shake. Oh. Come on. Then. It's a bit like a tummy. See? That sounds like my tummy. Only sometimes. Uh, only sometimes. Thank you for that. The first time you have it, it's like, oh, thingy. It's fresh, salty, citrusy, but delicious. Now, cucumber and the salad. I want to get rid of all the seeds, so if you just nice and gently peel the cucumber. Why do you peel it? Can you not eat the skin on it? Uh, you can eat the skin, but I want this salad to taste light and fresh. You can use a knife for this too, though, can't you? You can peel with a knife, but a speed peeler takes off the slices nice and thinly. So much quicker. So much quicker. That's why it's called a speed peeler. Looks, looks bare now, it looks a bit naked. It does look a bit naked, doesn't it? Now, you can get your spoon and see what happens. A teaspoon just takes out all those seeds. So whilst it sits in the dish, it doesn't make the salad go all soft, because that cucumber there is nice and crunchy. 
that's really good. Right, there you go. So see where your knuckles are there? That's what's always going to protect. If you put that little finger out, this little piggy, boom, comes off. What did I tell you about Daddy's knuckle? That's the first place you cut off. <laughs> All the time. There you go. The next addition to our prawn salad is firm, juicy baby gem lettuce. Look at the lettuce in half. What about the, the butt? The butts. <laughs> I'm keeping the butts on for now, so when I slice it, it stays together. OK? And then that little bit there, we, we don't but. use. OK? When you prepare lettuce for a picnic, you never slice it too thinly. OK? Otherwise, it wilts. That's good. Prawns are ready. Your tummy sauce is ready. Your dressing is ready. Take the lid off. And the trick is, you dress the bottom of your dish, because I'm going to put the prawns on here to protect the lettuce. Get your cucumber. I put my cucumber on. And then, finally, lettuce. OK. Now, the salad's not going to go soft. Why is that? Because it's not, the, it's not straight onto the dressing. That's right. What happens is we wrap this now, and then we get to our picnic, drizzle the sauce on top, we mix it up. We've got the dressing on the bottom and the dressing on top. Dressing on bottom and dressing on top. That's right. A little bit of cling film. Do you know the cling film trick? I don't know the cling film trick you yet. Put no. cling film over the top of the toilet. What? You, you'll understand it when you're my age. Well, you've been my age. Um, well. Okay. Salad in the fridge with the dressing, ready to go for our picnic. This is my ultimate picnic dinner feast: prawn and cucumber salad with a spicy yogurt dressing, anchovy dip with crudités and the kids' favourite, chocolate marshmallow and peanut fridge cake. <laughs>